Hey friends, welcome to the eighth episode of our Christmas in the Ozark series. I hope y'all are doing so, so well. I am so grateful once again to have y'all with us. Today, we're not just talking about aesthetics, but we are getting practical. You know we're going to be doing a few DIYs. And have you ever seen those perfectly wrapped gifts in the magazines and fancy stores and wondered how they got them to look the way they do? Today, I'll show you just that, all while making it a minimal waste way of doing it. We're also going to be making our way into the dining room and begin our table decor for the year. And I'm gonna show you how I hang my garland around windows and doorways with no holes or attachments to the walls. Check out last week's video if you missed it. We go to the tree farm and decorate our Christmas trees. If you could subscribe, like, and comment, one of my favorite things is reading your comments, learning from you, and hearing your suggestions. And if you want to see some of my photography and more of my personal life, my Instagram and TikTok is at Ozarks Dwellers. Now let's get into what you came here for. beginning our day by dyeing our napkins. I found some super affordable napkins, a set of them on Amazon. I like to dye my own linens a lot of times because one, it is obviously way more affordable and two, a lot of times I can't find exactly what I'm looking for. I had dried and saved all of our leftover avocado skins, but in a fit of cleaning, I tossed them. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna go the natural route this time, but I will be doing a lot of natural dyeing come this Easter season, if that's something you're interested in seeing. Now, I'm not gonna show you the directions of this because all of this would be dependent on the size of the garments or linens that you will be dyeing, the type of dye, all of the above but you can kind of see the process that we are doing here for this particular project. I will say when working with dyes, make sure that you cover all your bases as far as being super careful not to spill, not wearing anything that you're not okay with ruining. Gloves, of course, and stainless steel pots are a really great option. So I never quite can find the color that I'm exactly looking for, so I'm always mixing colors. For this, I mixed brown and green together. For these particular napkins, I went with an ombre effect. You can achieve this by dyeing in sections. Basically, the darker section is left in longer than the lighter section above it. I didn't want these napkins to be perfectly even or all one color. I kind of wanted to mimic a mossy effect when they're laying on the table. They're reading a little bit more gray than green on camera, especially against our cabinets, but in person, they turned out the exact color that I was looking for. I'll show you exactly what I do with them and how I use them in the following video where I'm going to be putting together a whole spread for hosting for the holidays and for a Christmas dinner. Okay, so let's turn to that garland hanging. For this project, all you need is your garland, a tension rod. I purchase the largest or thickest tension rod possible for the space that I will be using it for. Make sure you measure your doorway or window beforehand to make sure that it does fit. 
and then you will need either zip ties or pipe cleaners. I prefer pipe cleaners just because they're more malleable and easier to adjust. Oh, and I will say try to match the tension rods as close as possible to the color of the window frame or doorway. When speaking of garland, don't ever underestimate the power of a good fluff. Don't ever take it out of the box and leave it there. I promise you, you won't regret the time spent doing so and never turn down a helping hand who is willing to assist you in your endeavors. So the process of attaching it is beyond easy. All that I do is zip tie the two corners of the garland to the tension rod and zip tie the middle portion. Place the tension rod and the garland in the desired position and tighten according to the directions. Follow it up by fluffing it and moving the garland around so that the tension pole is unable to be seen. And that is it, a super simple solution with a very high impact. The first step to any room that I'm tackling is laying the foundation down. For the holidays, greens are almost inevitably the foundation that's laid first. Last year, I did a light layer of fresh greens scattered in the middle of the table that we clipped from one of our spruce trees, but this year I wanted it to be a little bit more substantial. After giving them their inaugural fluff, I proceeded to lay them out in a curved pattern just to add a little bit of extra depth to the table. And once again, we're returning to that ribbon. I told you I wanted to keep things very simple and use the same materials over and over again. All you have to do is take your ribbon, weave it in and out of the branches, and you've added a subtle hint of color and a bit of extra texture. I decided to bring these antique antlers back just in a more minimal way. I just couldn't resist. As far as I'm concerned, the more natural elements you can add, the better. For the sake of change and to add a bit of extra coziness, I'm taking our existing dining chairs and exchanging them with a bench that I have from upstairs. I love adding texture and layers in unexpected places. It just creates so much warmth and you just can't help but be welcomed into the space. And of course, you can't beat the warm glow of a flickering candle. We have a lot of gifts to wrap every season. So this means whenever I start the process, I'm gonna be settling in for a while. So I like to create an environment that really encourages me to stay put for a bit and enjoy it while I'm at it. So for starters, the condition of your box matters. A clean, crisp box means an equal wrapping surface. We've all been there. We've cut our wrapping paper, began to fold it, only to find that it doesn't completely fit all the way around the actual box. To avoid this, simply roll your gift across the paper and make sure that it can roll one time across the paper without falling off. There tends to be an overestimation as far as how much paper you actually need for the sides. You just need about half of the box's height. Then simply cut. If getting your line straight is a problem, they do have paper that is gridded on the back. This of course helps combat that issue. 
Going a bit against our minimal waste endeavor, I will say that a lot of people don't want to use too much tape, but tape is your best friend in this process. It's gonna keep things tight, it's gonna hold it in place. Tape is your friend. Tape the box closed, tape the paper to the box when first starting, tape the paper to the paper, and so on. I also see a lot of gifts that aren't pulled tight enough. If you saw in my last clip, before I wrapped the paper all the way around the box, I made sure that it was pulled really tightly before I folded it over. Make sure the paper is pulled as tightly as possible with each step. Now folding the sides is where it tends to go array most of the time. Once you've got the center section of the side taped down, make sure that you slide your finger all the way over and then trace the side of the box and fold making sure you've got a really crisp fold there you're going to pull as tight as possible over to the center trace the box once again down at the bottom and create another fold you know what i'm going to say next and of course repeat on the other side Now the middle section is ready to be folded up. Once again, make sure it is pulled as tight as possible. I will say I am breaking one of my rules here. I always like to use invisible tape. I didn't have that at the time. I thankfully do now. The tape will obviously be less visible. You can also use double-sided tape if you'd like. I'm just not convinced that it will work, but let me know in the comment section if that's what you use and it does happen to do the job. Also, for those of y'all who have kiddos or grandkids who like to shake the packages and they're really good at guessing what's inside, Blake and I will assign two symbols per kid, not letting them know which is which. And I will put the symbol on the back of the package so that only Blake and I knows which box belongs to which child. to make my wrapped gifts multi-purpose in that I like to create vignettes and displays out of them and use them for decorating purposes before they are given to whoever they are being gifted to. Using fabric is a really great alternative to paper. From a design standpoint, it adds so much softness and texture if you are using them as decor pieces. And from an ecological standpoint, of course, it's something that can be used from year to year. There are so many different ways you can wrap with fabric. Obviously, you can do it the same way you would with paper. I like to do it a little bit different by, you can see here, folding in the edges and then giving it just one tie. This is also a really great option if you've got awkwardly shaped gifts too. And here is a look of a couple of vignettes I've got around the house. You can kind of see what it looks like when all the gifts are kind of paired together. It just makes it so beautiful, so welcoming, warm, and inviting, and festive.
stay tuned for our next episode where we will be wrapping up our dining room. I've added to almost every area that you've already seen. I'm always continually adding and changing things around. So that's something I will be showing you. I'll also be sharing with you some of my favorite hosting ideas that we have done and will be doing. I did say Lola's room would be this episode. I'm sorry, it will be the next. I promise that's something you don't want to miss. But until then, let's go to our newest segment where I will be answering a couple questions from the previous video. And while I am doing so, here's a little footage of Lola and I making our favorite homemade cinnamon rolls, something that we do before every holiday morning. So I don't want to say anybody's name because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. But if you want to put a question mark at the beginning of your question, I'll know that you're okay with me sharing where the question came from. So the first question I'm going to be answering today asks about where I get all my ribbon from. You see I use it over and over time and time again. The best answer to this question is not necessarily where I get it from, but what to search for because there's so many options. I get it from everywhere. Each vendor has different sizes, colors, materials, so knowing what to search for is all you need to know and based on your budget and what exactly you're looking for, you can choose from there. So the ribbon I use all throughout the house is vintage sari ribbon from India. Basically, it's just the taking of these old garments, ripping them apart, in some cases sewing them or knotting them together to make ribbon or yarn. So my suggestion would just be to go to your search engine, put in vintage sari ribbon, maybe add the color and then search to your liking. When I find one that I am just over the moon thrilled with, I will let you know a particular vendor, but I've bought, purchased it from so many different places and it's all been really great. Honestly, I haven't had any bad experiences with any of it. So the next question I'm going to answer is where we got our fireplace screen. This is one of my favorite pieces in our house. It actually was purchased from one of my favorite antique stores. It is out of the very first home that was built in our town. Unfortunately, it was torn down a couple years ago, but this was one of the pieces that came from it. I am so grateful and honored to have such a pivotal piece of history from our town. Okay, well, I have so loved having you with me today. I hope that you will join me for our next video as we finish up all of our hosting endeavors. We do one of my favorite DIYs of the season and Lola and I will be decorating her room, all that and so much more. I cannot wait to see you then. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.